What's your favorite scene from Dead Poet Society? Oh, Captain Mike. Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah, that's, see, because that's an Earl thing. It's not just that it's a favorite movie. I mean, we talked about it before. 21 years sharing the same room. You were on one end, I was on the other end. It was a decent sized room. All right. So the, the I've never it's had- It's bigger in our minds. It, I've never had my own room. Just think of that, people. On your worst day, remember, Pastor Paul has not had his own room. <laughs> Uh, because I left my house. I never lived on my own. I went, I left my house and then I went, moved right in. Christy, we got married after That's we right. got married. So the day of my wedding was the last day I woke up in my house. And then we just went. So you did have your own room for yes. a while. Thanks Not too long, but what was it? Like two about years? A, yeah, about a year, year and a half. Yeah. So what's up, man? It's a no fear Friday. Let's punch, punch, punch. Fear in the mouth. Pastor Mark, lead pastor from Living Word Scottsdale's here. So glad to have you with us. Also, this show is for you. Buckle your seatbelts. We're gonna talk about how faith is a fight. We'll be right back. I got Pastor Mark to hold the yop stick. Can I get a yop in the house? Yop? Somebody else. <laughs> so my yop up right there. It's my oh, yop. Is this our yop? It's it means yop. so many things, though. So many things. Uh, no, that, no that, 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 means, that wouldn't work. That means the devil. <laughs> I just, uh, let's, let's, let's take it back. Let's take back the devil sign. Oh, yeah. Barbaric yop. No, that's not going to work out. <laughs> no, I'm so glad you're with us. My name is Pastor Paul, lead pastor at Living Word Gilbert. It's Pastor Mark, my brother, who's also the lead pastor at Living Word Scottsdale. It's coffee and confessions. You mind if I clink with you? Yo. Yo. We're going to drink some coffee up in here, and we're going to bring you a good word for your day today. We've got a good word. Then at the end of the show, we're going to lead you in confessions over your life. Man, that's the best part of the show. That's it. So we get to lead them in confessions and God, speak God's word over your life. That's what our viewers love, and that's why we love you being a part of things here. And so, um, tell me about your message that you brought at Living Word Scottsdale. Man, recently. yeah, no, we. So no, we've been talking about it this we week. We have. We were talking about it yesterday, but a, a faith that fights is what I titled my message this past week because I think <clears throat> for Christians this time of year, always hit that mid year. You you've gone into the new year with a lot of new spiritual disciplines, a lot of new motivation. I'm going to finish my degree. I'm going to go take this new class. I'm going to lose 20 Brown pounds. By the tail. Even spiritual and physical disciplines. But it seems like life gets in the way. Life happens. People happen. And before you know it, you end up losing motivation. It's like when you ever been in the ocean, when the wave comes, instead of fighting the wave because it gets really exhausting, you kind of duck and it's kind of easier down here. All the noise of the wave goes over your head and then you come back up and you're fine. And I think that's what happens in our life. We start avoiding yeah. or becoming passive when the storm or the wave comes in our life from the enemy. And then we find ourselves in June and July where we're in a rhythm of the storm of life comes, issues come, bad reports come. We just duck. We stop fighting <laughs> the that. enemy. Yeah. And we don't... So that I, And I think that avoidance, sometimes avoidance is actually fear being acted out. It's like... Yeah. So, so think about going under... Mm -hmm. I, and I actually learned that trick not too long ago. I was always mm -hmm. fighting the waves. I, I actually like to punch the waves, actually. Mm -hmm. when kids laugh at me when I do yeah. it. Here it comes out like this. Yeah. And the, but I realized that, yes, it is more tiring doing that. So I realized if you duck... But guess what? If you duck, you're never going to learn. That's not a sustainable place to stay under the water. Mm, you can, that's exactly right. You that's will good. die. Yes, you will. <laughs> You'll not be in the right place. But if you can learn how to fight. So really where I want to be is I've always admired. We're both going to end up in California sometime this month here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what, I'd love to surf. Yeah. I don't know if I can. But imagine that. What if you could get on the waves, fight back that way, mm -hmm. move forward with it. That's the way to fight back, perhaps. Right. You know, maybe that's what we need to do more. Well, well, there is a, you know, I, you know, in Arizona, we have these monsoons that happen all the time. And I was watching Channel 10 the other night. 
Channel 10 says, you know, they give all these, for anybody that's not here in Arizona, they give out these rules. So when a monsoon comes on the freeway. Or, or a haboob. A haboob and it's low visibility, you can't see. They say, pull off to the side of the road. It's these big dust storms. Pull off to the side of the road, turn off your lights so nobody follows you. Because when a storm comes, you can easily be uh, confused. Yeah. Um, a, a storm comes, you can get confused quickly. And when a storm comes, you can forget the very things that you knew, the yes. most fundamental things, you forget those things. Why is that true? Because it's the sudden storm, the sudden fear, it comes in, people freak out, and they'll, they tell you, just pull off to the side of the road. Yeah. And so uh, that's, and that's kind of the news. Well, the news gives people instructions, but the Bible gives us our instructions and, of, of what to do. And Thank God. I was reading this story of where Jesus was with the disciples, and he's like, Let's go to the other side of the lake. Obviously, he had a Jesus doesn't do anything for not a reason. Yep. And and so he says, go to the other side of the lake. They do. In the middle, Jesus was sleeping. And you can imagine Jesus sleep is like like the deep, like, you know, on that Saturday, Sunday afternoon golf sleep when you're on your couch set. Oh heck yeah. Oh heck yeah. I mean, it's the good one. It's where it's deep like in my your dad soul. Yes. I believe Jesus sleeps like that every time. That's how he does. He has that deep within yourself. And so here's they're sleeping on the boat, the storm, this, they called it a squall. So a squall is actually not a storm that with clouds, it's actually one of disturbance. Kinda. It's a disturbance with wind and waves and it causes just, it's like a microburst actually it says. Mm. And, it, and the waves start crashing in on the boat, sinking the boat. So all the disciples start waking up Jesus going, dear God, you, you gotta save us. And, and so he goes and he, um, he wakes up and they're like, do you, have you not any faith? You know, in typical Jesus fashion. He looks yeah. at all the disciples. He speaks to the wind and the waves immediately and says, you know, and they calm down and everything was fine. And then they start questioning. So here was these disciples. They've been with Jesus at that point for about a year. Yeah. You would think for all the miracles and everything that they've seen, multiplying the bread and the, everything that they would, just like this guy who can do miracles and heal people, he can also mm. speak to the wind and the waves, no problem, let's just get over it. And then they say, who is this guy that can speak to the wind and the wave? And, and, it's, and it listens to him. Uh. And, and my thing is this, in the middle of the storm, they forgot the most fundamental things that they knew yeah. was that what Jesus can do. They forgot those things. And so what I want to do is I want to, I want to speak to that storm in your life that we can forget those things. We can forget. And, our, and through the middle of the year when, when the storm comes, when the bad report comes, I had people call me this week, this morning with bad news. And it seems like when all heck is breaking loose, we forget, can forget the most fundamental things that Jesus is our Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. Mm, mm. Go ahead, gas. Go up to $7. That's fine. My God is my provider. Okay, the bad call from the doctor. He's called Jehovah Nephi, our healer. Yes. He's called these things. Let's not forget the most fundamental things that's in God's word. And let's go back to what God has taught us. Well, interestingly, it wasn't wrong if I'm not. <laughs> Jesus didn't say, why, where is your faith when they came to him and told him that they're in the middle of something. Yeah. It was how they approached him in the boat. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, be, that was an issue mm -hmm. because they let fear overtake them. And mm -hmm. do you think that fear is the thing? It's like the deer in the headlights. It, uh, they always say that a deer. Have you ever seen a deer in headlights before? Do you remember back in the day we used to go deer spotting? Yeah. We'd go up to northern Arizona and with our youth group, actually, we'd go out with these giant flashlights. And as soon as you hit mm -hmm. a deer, it's the middle of the night and they'd be spooked by anything. But as soon as that light hits them, they freeze. They don't know what to do. So I'm wondering, what do you think about that? Is that is that what pe is it the fear that comes in and grips you that causes you not to know what to do? Does it does it freeze your mind? I feel like well, well perhaps that's what happens. It's the fear, but I think it's your perspective. I think when the storm comes, you have to look at your perspective and say this, because fear can come in when sudden. We know when just super sudden, confusing things happen that comes from the enemy. But are you are you in the middle of a storm? Are you in or or are you in between two miracles? Mm. And I think you have to decide what's my perspective today. 
Am I getting ready to build up a testimony and I can't wait to share this and I'm going to look back in a month from now and go, my gosh, the Lord just got me out of that storm. Or am I going to endure? Because here's why. Jesus was heading to the other side of the lake and soon as he, after the storm passed, he got to the shore and he was met by a demonic man, a crazy, crazy man. Crazy man. Crazy man, naked, wandering in the graveyards, the tombs. Society had cast him away. And you know what? Jesus went over there, set him free. Mm. They said after Jesus prayed for him, he was there clothed, sitting on a rock in sound, in a good state, in a good mind. See, the enemy sent that storm, caused that stop. wild storm to stop Jesus because that man had a call in his life. Think about your life and what God is, the enemy is trying to send your way. You have purpose, you have a plan. God is sending something. The enemy wants to send something your way to stop the good and the purpose in your destiny. But I think this, that when we get passive and stop fighting, mm. we chip off pieces and just will over pieces of our destiny, destiny yeah. Yeah, to passive. the enemy and say, well, the job, everyone's coming against me. I just, I'll quit because it just, it's better. I just goes, no, no, get in there and get believe down. the faith that fights. Yeah. With the word of God, amen. So we've been in ministry about two and a half decades now, Pastor Mark and I. Uh, church that we, our family planted together. I know our building that we have right now, I can think of a fight that we had talking about yes. that. Mm -hmm. um, what was, we were in the middle of a refinance on our, our, our building's uh, mortgage and it was something that was really gonna bless and take us out of debt and do a lot of things. So we're sitting there believing together. So we go, we go to process this, everything was done, and just to get to the point of where everything was about ready to be finalized, you remember how hard it was just mm -hmm. to get to there. Then we find out that the county recorder had recorded one of our parcels of land as owned by our next door neighbor, yeah. who happens to be Gilbert Public Schools. Mm -hmm. And so I remember going over there and take this little piece of paper. I thought I'll run over there and just ask him, hey, just our lawyer gave us, just sign this real quick, just sign this real quick. So it says, obviously that's our property. And it was in July, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they were about ready to go on break. And, and they said, oh, I'm sorry, that's not how it works. Yeah. What was it? Was it finally in September that they actually, so we're, we're, our minds are, oh my God, like we needed this thing to happen. And our minds are, we're praying and everything. And in the middle of the water, it's the squall you're talking mm -hmm. about. And, and it was really interesting because, and, and I'll, I'll say this, being there, this is why you need a church family because we were there he was there for me i was there for him we were there for each other to be able to lean on each other and our other family members and give each other the strength because it was tough man during that time but to finish where you know there's a miracle like you said in between two miracles where there's one on the other right, side right right and i remember do you remember sitting there <laughs> i was in front of my house i was on my phone and i don't i don't know i don't remember exactly where you were but you were watching the live stream of this gilbert public schools meeting and yeah. we finally got the signature, the school board meeting, the school yeah. board meeting and they were going to finally put it on the agenda, finally, after months right. of just simply signing this paper that said the, the, the land we owned was actually ours, which it was. It was just a technicality. Right. And they finally brought it up. They voted on it and passed it. And we're sitting there watching. Mm -hmm. What if we would have ducked the wave? Right. What if we would have stopped fighting? Sometimes you fight not only for yourselves, but we fight for those around us too. Man. And I still have it on my voicemail when the bank finally called us and said, I still have it where it says, Mark, it's all done. The deal is done. <laughs> I still keep it on my voicemail. And so that's the sign of God's favor, man. In between two miracles. That's where you're at. I right love now. it. Maybe that's the name of the show. Yeah. Let's see. Hey, man, uh, let's do our confessions together. Are you ready? Confession one, my faith in the Lord's plan and purpose for my life makes me unstoppable. Yes. I'm not done until he says I'm done. Amen. Let's say Amen. it together. My, my faith, faith is in the Lord's plan and, and purpose for my life makes me unstoppable. I'm not done until he says I'm done. done. Praise God. I'll say it first, then repeat. Say this after me in just a moment. I will stay in the fight of faith. Bad counsel, adversaries, negative thoughts. Mama said knock you out. That's Let's so go. good. Come on now. Here we go. I will stay in, in the, the fight, fight of faith, faith bad counsel, counsel adversaries, negative, negative thoughts. Mama said, knock you out. That's Let's the West go. Side version of the Bible that's right the, that's there. The 90, that's the 90s way. Hey, right thanks, bro. <laughs>
Love you guys. And hey, get to church this weekend. A great church if you're in the Scottsdale area in the East Valley. A great church if you're in Gilbert area, Living Word Gilbert, or any of our Living Word churches. You're in Mesa, go there. Abatuki, go there. Man, God bless you, family.